Ready? Awesome. Okay. So uh, Jeff's going to take it away. Okay. My name is Jeff Jacobson. I'm the chief architect and I run the GoldenEye program at Copeland Corporation. Unlike the prior discussion, we're actually in the business of building things that are very rugged. And what we find is that people need their hands free, but they also need information. If you take the example down here at Newport News, they're putting a front end on a new aircraft carrier. And that guy that's sitting up there is all the way up in that little hydraulic lift. Or you got people that are running around doing uh, utility work on poles, sometimes in bad weather. Or you got mechanics at Toyota doing work on cars and not having to walk from one bay to the other because they can instantaneously, omnipresent, present whatever they're discussing or looking at to someone else, whether they're on site or somewhere else in the world. If you look here, you see a fireman who actually has an earlier model of GoldenEye on. GoldenEye is typically used outside of their SCBA. In this case, you see the GoldenEye on the firefighter. This is a uh, JFIX uh, field trial at Camp Roberts in California in February. And the interesting thing about wearing this with your self-contained breathing apparatus, you don't hear everybody else breathing, number one. So it doesn't sound like a Darth Vader convention where everybody's going <laughs> and they're all breathing pretty hard doing their work. Secondly, it cancels out all the noise so that it's very easy to talk to somebody and hear them very clearly. And the noise is not injected in your ear by an earbud, but it's held close to your ear, almost as though in a noisy room somebody walks up to you and whispers in your ear. You can hear them very clearly. All this was designed to allow you to maintain your normal sense of presence. It's not in your eye, it's generally used below or above your eye. And the reason is that when people are in a hazardous situation, they typically want as much of their peripheral vision and as much of their natural vision available as possible. If you ask any soldier that wears night vision that runs around with these things plugged in front of him, the only reason he does that is because it's the only way he can see at night. If he could see just as well with just a simple lens in front of his face, he'd go to that in a heartbeat because he's going to get more field of view. And chances are he's going to get shot by what he doesn't see or step on something that's going to blow him up. In this particular case, if you've ever tried to talk, you got a couple of firefighters in here amongst each other. If I tried to yell to you and I had an SCBA, and you wouldn't understand a word I'm saying because you're all tucked up in your system, I can whisper to you in this system and you'll hear everything that I say. And the people standing on the outside of these uh, suits, these biohazard suits that we were testing that day, the, everybody in the biohazard suits can talk to each other and communicate and share information and pull information down from the internet or any other source. Now we work with Boeing and we work with Honeywell who are designing the new space suit. So we're incorporating a golden eye technology for speech and gesture communication into the new helmets and the new suits. And in this particular case, this is a perfect example of remote expert you got two guys that can't see each other working on each side of a space vehicle. They can't exactly just yell at each other. And they got a guy down on the ground who's actually going through detailed information with them at the same time. Now they can see each other's view. They can share that inst inst instantaneously with them themselves, with the people on the ground or vice versa. So we designed the system around personal performance, safety, and communication. If you look at the device itself, it typically runs six to nine ounces. Uh, in this particular case, you'll see the red circles there. You've got a 14 megapixel CMOS imager that does natural light and near IR. And on the other side, you have a far IR imager or a SWIR or potentially a terahertz camera. It weighs less than an ounce. It's military. It's available today. So you have the ability to see in other frequencies of electromagnetic energy beyond normal visible light. And you have the ability to be able to pair those up and fuse those images together. In this particular case, GoldenEye, this is a much earlier design. Um, you can put up multiple screens. You know how you look at your icons on your phone and you see several little icons and you, you can hit one it opens up the screen. Well, in this particular case, I could take an input from all of you, pull all your faces up, put them there, and be doing something. And when I want to, I can look at a screen here with all your faces on it while I'm busy working another screen and select the person who's talking and have them blow up and fill the entire screen. So now I can see what you're doing. You can stream me video, I can stream you video. I can pull up documentation, floor plans, all at the same time and just by slight movement on my head see them. Or if I want to keep them all in one place, I can just call them up. And if I don't, can't remember what I've got out there, I can ask GoldenEye help and he'll 
just give me a list of what I've got currently floating in space about me. We work in the area of having sunlight readability. We have to work in the desert with oil companies. We have to work in nighttime operations. You want to maintain your night vision. You don't put a white light in front of somebody's face. If you're a pilot, you understand red lights. So consequently, you go to a grayscale red. So everything kind of looks a little funky to begin with, but you can see everything, including video, in forms of red. That, that when you look away, you have your normal night vision available. Synthetic vision. It's really important. Be able to see gases that you can't see with the naked eye. Being able to uh, detect particulates or see organic matter or just look through something. A terahertz camera let me look through a masonry wall. I have to be able to operate in heat, cold, rain, sleet, snow, wind, and in very difficult spaces. So when we work with uh, BP or we work with uh, Schlumberger or one of the big oil companies, we have to contend with tornadoes, lightning, the North Sea, winds, freezing temperatures. But the most important thing here is, as a first responder, this policeman who's standing there talking to a Verizon employee in a truck has more resources on with GoldenEye than he has naturally in his vehicle. So team sharing collaboration, being able to share images, being able to pull up data, being able to go to a, a remote expert somewhere in, in space and be able to pull that information in instantaneously is where a great deal of this value is present. Being able to have omnipresence anywhere instantaneously has great value. You don't have to climb an airplane, you have to rent a car, you don't have to get a hotel, but you're there. Um, Passive uh, crew sensing, being able to detect where they are, the condition of your crew, GPS, deprived GPS. Now, every one of these guys that's out there performing their security duties have the ability to communicate just like they were rolling in a patrol car, but they actually have more capability now because of 4G LTE. If you want to communicate, you can have squads of people that actually communicate separately from one another but have the ability to go to a different group and they can encrypt all their communications so nobody can sit out there on a scanner and listen to what you say. If you've got heavy equipment rolling around, it could be fire trucks in this case, it's uh, military and they're doing some CB work. The fact they have a golden eye on tells the system, that big truck that guy's driving around, where they are and the truck will not drive over them, which they occasionally have done. If you look at a firefighter from standpoint, Anything that you see as a firefighter in the field, anyone else you can share it with. And your battalion commander, your, your fire chief, can see all that information immediately. So he knows where you are and what direction you're heading in. And every one of those designations are right there on the floor plan. At the same time, you're looking at the fire chief's camera, looking at the scene of a, of a, of a fire. He has other ambient information. He can share with people on the outside what's going on on the inside. Now, if you look at an overview, he's got a site map that shows him by GPS which trucks are on location. He can call up any one of those trucks, pull up any information about what they're carrying, whether they have the proper equipment, who's there. In addition to knowing where each of these individuals are from that truck in that location. Industrial safety. We have to work with safety glasses, face shields, SCBAs, helmets, hard, uh, hard hats, ball caps. We work with thermal conditions, solar conditions, chemical, electrical, biological conditions, and clothing requirements. If you wear a sensor belt about your chest, put a sensor around your wrist and one against your chest, whether you're wearing uh, protective gear as a fireman or you're wearing, in this case, a bulletproof vest, the system will passively monitor your respiration rate, your body core temperature, how much oxygen you've got in your blood. If it starts to sense that some of these things are out of balance with your normal physiology and your age, it will come online and tell you what you need to do. If you normally operate at 100 feet above sea level in San Jose, but now you're in Colorado Springs at 6,000 feet, and you happen to be my age, 60 years old, and I've got son-in-laws that are 25, 28, 29, when I'm out shucking hay on our ranch south of here, uh, I can't shuck hay like I used to, but I try. And you get out of breath. Well, you can imagine, if you move me to 6,000 feet on a normal day, I, I have a certain capacity. I get there. If they're counting on me to do something, I'm getting altitude sickness or I'm going to pass out because I'm pushing myself too hard. One, you need to know that beforehand. And secondly, if you don't do something about it, they need to know that you're not going to be there when you're counted on. Facial recognition, we're working with the FBI and with the government agencies on being able to put it in a passive mode, and as I look around the room, as faces come within a certain distance of me, they can automatically pull it up and look for a known person that I'm looking for. So if you're doing a security at an NFL game or 
uh, you're at some other event. If you capture somebody that you're looking for, then that's probably a local guy. But that information at nighttime can go off to Fort Meade. They got 22 acres of underground computers. They go through all that stuff and they go, oh, we found a terrorist we've been looking for for a long time. He happens to be sitting next to that woman right there and the woman right behind him. In fact, they were walking together. So now they've got possibly local contacts that they can now follow up on. Synthetic vision um, gives you a lot of capability to see some things, read barcodes, scan a, uh, some containers of materials that to a fireman or to a security person might look innocuous, but if you apply water to them, they could become dangerous. If they mix, they could become dangerous. They could become toxic gas. You want to be able to scan those things and ask the internet whether or not these things are harmful, especially if mixed, and are there any conditions that I should be concerned about. You want to be able to look at a person in normal, uh, visible light, but you also want to be able to see a person in IR imaging, or you can go to thermal rendering. Um, you want to be able to recognize where there's harm and where there's danger. We fly UAVs with these. You can actually put yourself in the cockpit and when you rotate your head, the head tracker, there's a nine axis solid state tracker, tracks up to 2,000 degrees per second in GoldenEye. So the little camera or the whole vehicle, in this case it's a quadcopter, the whole vehicle turns. So I've been in meetings like this where I've flown them down the aisleway and shown projecting from here up on the screen what I'm doing. But 15 minutes it was a little too much to set up. So this is what it looks like with a ball cap. It's waterproof, dustproof, pretty much a rugged device. These are specs on the device. It's a multi-core processor. It's only getting faster. Uh, as I said, it's got GPS. It's got solid state tracking in it. We have um, an enhanced augmented um, GPS so that if you are deprived of GPS, Golden Eyes will hive on each other and on other systems that they're allowed to connect to so that if a guy's standing outside the window and he's got really good GPS, I can use his data. If somebody else in the room has data from another guy over there, I can use that data. We can triangulate our radios and it can all be done automatically so I don't have to ask it to do anything. I just want to know where I am. It tells me where I am. It shows me where I am in the building. But if I happen to be walking along in a building and I have a set floor plan or I'm following a set map of terrain, my cameras are providing information. The fact that I'm talking to my computer, I have no keyboard. I generally don't ever need one. And the fact is, I've stood on flight lines with jet aircraft taking off and used GoldenEye, and it's not affected by the noise of the jet airplane. The guy on the other end doesn't hear any noise at all. So when I'm saying, oh, I just passed the second elevator, uh, or, or the, I'm on the second floor, I just passed the elevator, I'm going up to the third floor now, any air or drift that accumulated in my moving around from the last known point is corrected, now I'm right in front of the elevator. Now it actually knows when I take the first step and each step that I take going up, up those stairs. It knows when I turn to the platform. If I see certain kinds of doorways, if I see certain kind of architecture, it automatically knows where I am. And it knows where I am in position to everybody else that I'm working with. And that's pretty much it. So I will say this, if you have a lot of questions about this, um, you can talk to this guy right here from Verizon. No. <laughs> we're, we're teamed with Verizon to bring this technology out before the end of the year. We've been working with them for a couple of years now. And uh, we've got a lot of work going on with Teeks down in Texas. Uh, we're beginning some work with the New York Fire Department, LA Fire Department. Uh, you probably saw some of the early ads that were on TV back in the beginning of January of uh, 2013. Uh, Verizon put GoldenEye out there in the marketplace. Any questions? Yeah, questions. Um, I don't see any hands yet, so uh, well, uh, quick question while I walk over that. Uh, what is the heat tolerance for your golden eye? Because I know that was one of the things. There was a firefighter who wanted to do something with Google Glass, but then it was like when you go into a fire, it would essentially melt on the side of your face. Um, so I'm um, curious how uh, you're addressing that. Yes, um, golden eye is a combination of a magnesium copper titanium alloy and uh, polycarbonate. Uh, depending on the use and application, mater certain materials are selected differently. Um, batteries, for example, would be different. Instead of using a normal smart lithium ion battery like you'd expect to find in, in 18650, you would use a lithium thionyl battery which has a temperature of operation, typical operation, minus 50 to 125 degrees C. Generally, you'll find that uh, if you need to go to protection for heat, you have what's called heat soaked. 
And that means that you run in like you're from an air conditioner. You run outside and you're cool for a moment and then you slowly start to feel the heat. Well, that's how these devices go. These air tanks that these guys are running like firemen running into a building, uh, 20 minutes maybe, 25 minutes, it depends. But they're not going to be in there all that long. So there, there are ambient cooled aerogel systems that we can um, actually shield or house the system so that it basically is reflecting much of the heat and absorbing very little heat. And we design these with extremely high performance electronics in order to be able to run the clock cycle low to be able to do all the normal things you want to do, including streaming video. So you keep the temperature down, you add some protection to it. Yes, if you put it into an environment, um, eventually the fireman's going to melt too if it's that warm. You had a slide up there, Firefighter Pro, I think it was called. Yeah, which indicated, it's a software program. Which indicated location of team members inside. Mm -hmm. So how do you accomplish indoor positioning for an unfamiliar facility or building since you're indoors? Well, you, in, in order to reference where you are in a building versus it's a square and you have no idea what's inside of it, you need to have a floor plan. And uh, it's not going to be too long before it's going to become mandatory that cities and, and communities are going to have to provide accurate data on the floor plans and the changes and the modifications for the very reason that you just mentioned. But um, let's just say that you run into a building and you don't know what's inside and you don't know where the walls are. Then what you've got is you've got multiple cameras on each person. You can see what they see and describe what's, what's being described. You've got the ability to, even without GPS, to accurately triangulate where you are in the building. You can go along and, and just by viewing, you can actually, we haven't done it, you could write a software program that maps the environment as you see it. As people enter into a room here and enter into a room here and as you scan around, it automatically does this. Now how would it do that? It would also have to have a laser scanner, which you probably wouldn't wear on your head, but you probably have a laser scanner not so different from a little device like Predator would wear that when you turn around, it's actually sensing the distance. So it knows that wall, and knows that wall, and it begins to build a construct for you to operate in. Now, I'm just speculating here, but what you're describing is not impossible to do. And you don't currently have that product? We have that capability, but not with what you're describing. Generally, we go into a known floor plan. You know you are ended the front door. And you know how many feet it is to the back door. You know where the windows and the, and plumbing and various other things are. And a really good reason is that you get a fireman that's trapped. And we've done a lot of, lot of work recently with some fire departments. And he has no way out. But he doesn't know that right behind that wall over there is a standpipe for the fire protection system for the building. And with his axe, he can break into that pipe, stand in that water, and buy himself an extra 30 or 40 minutes if necessary, just standing there while the fire is raging all around him. He's in a water shower the whole time. But the coolest thing is, it doesn't matter how many times you've been in a stressful situation where your life is on the line, you're separated from your partners, and you're unable to free yourself. You're pinned. Uh, for most people, they'll experience claustrophobia if they just crawl under their house and get far enough under their house that they realize that if there was an earthquake or a problem, they're stuck there. There's, there's nobody going to come help them. So at that particular point, my being able to talk to you and tell you to calm down. For you to be able to see your oxygen consumption and your breathing rate and your respiration come down. For me to talk to you and get your mind off of that. And for me to show you, here, these are the guys. See these guys? These are the guys coming in. They're right outside. You hear them out there pounding on that? They're coming through the wall. Just calm down. Don't run out of air before the guys get there. The fact that you can see that there's people coming to help you, and you typically know those people. And secondly, because you've got somebody with the presence to worry about how you're breathing and, and your state of mind will probably save your life. Now, there's other things that you'll do. There were six firefighters lost not too long ago in Dallas, Texas, and we met with the Dallas uh, fire chief. These were all seasoned guys. Youngest guy that was operating that day in, that lost his life had 10 years, full-time, not volunteer, full-time fireman. They ran into a building pulling hoses like they normally do. Now, why weren't they carrying an IR camera? Because if you got an axe in one hand, you got a hose in the other hand, you really don't have any place to put the IR camera. And you find most of the time they don't have IR cameras because, well, they're lucky if they have one on a truck. And many fire departments have one on every other truck. And so they have to say, well, you got this IR, you have to come to the, so I need to be able to borrow the one from your truck. Not everybody's got one mounted here on their head. 
and they typically are range from seven to fifteen thousand dollars a piece. If you integrate this into GoldenEye, we can bring the cost substantially down to where you're now talking about hundreds or a couple of thousand dollars, depending on the level of resolution and performance you're looking for. But the key thing is this. Those guys pulling that in had a 40-foot ceiling above them in the main entrance of that building. Now, the fire was going on up there, and at the level they were dealing at at ground level, they sensed the temperature. They knew that it was an ambient environment they could fight the fire in. So they pulled on, they cranked their hoses. Now, some of those guys must have looked up to see where the fire is, because the fire is just kind of running across the ceiling up above. But they had no idea how hot it was. The fact that it was approaching 1,600 degrees will create a situation where, like in 9-11, the building will fall on you. Now, if any one of those seasoned firemen had known that was 1,600 degrees and was flashed across the entire ceiling, he would have ordered everybody out. But no, they were in there fighting the fire, and the whole damn building just dropped right on top of them. The fact is, if they had GoldenEye on, if any one of them had even passed his camera in view, it would have registered the temperature and it would have registered to all of them that they're in immediate danger. They would have all run out. And you can go scenario after scenario after scenario. You know, people that, uh, emergency techs can pull up to a, to a situation at night where they can't see the person's vein in their arms, flip on their alternative synthetic vision, look at it and see it just like little lit up highways do what they need to do. If you get on a site where you have a rollover and you have people that have been expelled from the vehicle and there's no city lights, there's nothing, just bushes and trees and wilderness, they flip on their IR and look around and the bodies look like LEDs all lit up at night. Otherwise, they get out there with their flashlights and they're going around in the, in the sticks trying to find people and it could take just enough time that those people die. So, um, this was originally designed for service and maintenance to just make it easy to have whatever you need hands-free. It operates in practically every known language right now, and it operates extremely well. It is far more efficient than using a touchscreen as far as accuracy or doing any kind of brushing with your, your system up here. You guys all know you pick up your phone, you hit the thing, and you, you expect it to go, and it doesn't, so then you hit it again, and it goes, oh, shit. So now you put your finger on your phone, and you bury it there until finally it clicks. You know, it turns on the speakerphone, turns on the mute, turns it off. Um, Speech is the most natural gesture that people have for communication and being able to pull up all the information that they need and be able to size it. One of the things that I can do that you can't do very well when you're busy is I can take any document and blow it up as big as I want. So if I want a 200 inch screen in front of me, I have a 200 screen in front of me. I can look at anything I want to. I can zoom and take a piece of that and set it aside and then go get some other information. These are all things that are all capable, all demonstrable right now. So we're in the process with Verizon to make this available for normal enterprise application, for firefighters and first responders, even for the military. And, and then just a question on that, um, and kind of like with earlier, how are you working with governments and, and things like that to kind of help them understand that there are solutions out there like yours to, where, uh, to help incentivize them to then push the AEC industry and others to provide better data that then applications like yours could use? Actually, the government's way ahead of where most of you seem to be. Um, we just got through taking five years of augmented reality, mapping locations, designating a target, designating information about a possible hostile individual, designating that building over there as something, just like you saw up there. That's all being done right now, real time. The problem is they're trying to do it with screens that pop out of their chest, which don't work very well when you're laying down and are difficult or impossible to see in bright daylight. Um, they also weigh a lot. Uh, secondly, um, if they have to pull something out of, like now they use smartphones. In fact, uh, Verizon is the primary supplier to the US military of cellular services. So nine times out of 10, you pick up a military guy's phone and says Verizon on it. Uh, when GoldenEye came about, like at Camp Roberts here, there were 400 what they'll call operators. They came from uh, Secret Service, FBI, local police, local fire, Salinas Fire Department was there. It took us 20 minutes to have their um, uh, big truck that they use for disasters where they've got all the cameras and, and all the, the, the communications capability to roll in to a location and monitor everything. It took us 20 minutes to be up and we were walking through makeshift buildings at Camp Roberts doing extraction of hostages and uh, rescuing people with full video with, with GoldenEye. They were blown away. 
Most of the military has not really seen this. A few of the military have, but we're working with a number of military agencies now and the Department of Homeland Security. Very cool. Well, um, definitely, thank you. Uh, and a round of applause for all of our speakers, <laughs> saving lives and helping the government move forward.